I'm Bo Perry, and I'm a modern day inventor. The architecture that I've worked tirelessly on the last seven years has uh, been an interesting pathway. And I want to share with you uh, some of the uh, uh, key positions we've taken in the, the biometrics field, as well as uh, uh, share with you my aha moment. So as uh, stated, I've got uh, five patents, filed my sixth this summer, and I'm currently working on my seventh and eighth. My small team of research and development uh, individuals uh, engaged in machine learning, uh, deep learning, and biometric uh, uh, systems uh, deal with contextual awareness that are all bound by biometric signals, liveness detection, that is robust liveness detection, and biosignature key binding. So these are the elements that we focus in. Just wanted to uh, explain to everyone, I don't have a computer science pedigree, nor do I have any formal code training. Uh, there was a need that arose, I taught myself how to code, and I believe firmly that least qualified person in the room sometimes can have the best idea. So for all the uh, young innovators out there, uh, do keep that in mind. So uh, I wanna talk a little bit about my inspiration. Uh, it comes from the uh, dreamers and the writers and the directors of science fictions. So I believe that uh, the seeds of innovation are sowed in the ideas of today that manifest into the technologies of tomorrow. So when you're looking for inspiration, take a look at the, the movies you're watching and the, uh, the artwork uh, you look at and the books you read, because oftentimes um, you, you'll find the keys and the answers there. So who's got one of these at home? Kind of interesting, right? Uh, speaker previously mentioned voice recognition, again, uh, we deal primarily in camera-based biometry, but voice recognition uh, is the main driver on this system. Uh, they're great for helping out with homework, uh, schedule reminders and whatnot, but you know what I like to do? When I'm over at a friend's house, I'll say, Alexa, set an alarm for 4.20 a.m. <laughs> Get a call the next day. Clever. I shouldn't be able to do that. So, you know, I'm not the owner of that system of that, in that household. And Amazon, I believe, is working on figuring out those permission sets, but that's one of the problems I sought out to solve uh, in, in my uh, burgeoning into the, uh, the biometric realm. So uh, think back 10 years ago. How many digital online accounts did you have? Right, maybe a few. How many do you have now? Right? So we look at Internet of Things, all this new hardware, the wearables, uh, new machines, and robotics coming into play. The amount of gateways for authentication are augmenting almost exponentially. And there's really not been a, a way to catch up to, to prove to these devices and things and accounts that, you know, we're the correct user. So in tackling that problem, we looked at a, a few different scenarios that would help us uh, tackle this long need that Homo sapiens, mankind has had ever since we crawled out of the caves. Being able to tell friend from foe was inherent and necessary to our survival. Even more so now, I mean, we can be ruined financially if the wrong guy gets into you know, certain accounts. So this need exists, but it's almost gotten more critical and the, the solution has uh, required some more uh, critical thinking in order to solve the problem. And I believe that we've got a, at least a sliver of a way to, to capture that. And, I want to share with you, uh, obviously this is dating me, uh, many of you have seen this movie, Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Staff of Ra moment, that moment when the sun's at the right angle, the hardware's in the right place, 
the sun shoots through, and there it is, voila, the Ark of the Covenant. I had a need in my day job many years ago, eight years ago, before this whole biometric to-do uh, became mainstream and it ended up in our pockets everywhere. So there was a bad acting IT director who was quarantining large files. And our boss was getting pretty upset with us because we weren't meeting our revenue points. So with permission, I asked the boss, can I try to solve this? I went and I taught myself how to crack server. So I did it, I liberated the data, saved the day, proved that this guy was you know, doing something he shouldn't have been. But in that same moment, I thought to myself, wow, if I can do this, anyone can. What's safe anymore? There are all of these gateways that are wide open with someone who's got the will and the way to get in. And so in my staff of raw moment, one winter, I was, this was in 2011, I was in the shower and I was watching the droplets of water on the glass. And in that staff of raw moment, the sun burst right in, shot through the glass and I held my hand up and I watched as the photons of light lens through the water droplets. I said, hmm, that's cool. Then I blew on the water droplet and I watched that signature of light move on my hand. Then I blew it a different direction. I observed that process change direction. And I thought to myself, as I was thinking about biometrics and artificial intelligence in the background, wow, if I was an observant machine watching this, I can basically stop that data in an air gap and prove that the presence of this action is occurring if I've got control of that camera. This led to my first patent application in 2012. We all know the whole to-do about passwords. We're in the horse and buggy stage right now and hopefully leaving it uh, with passwords. We could look around your desk, uh, guess, brute force, all these ways of you know, proving that the password uh, scenario is at its end, at its demise. So what we've sought out to do is to make the walls much more complex and difficult for bad guys, but at the same token, almost frictionless and much more convenient for the correct user. So this is the type of architecture, right, that we're going after now is added complexity for the bad guys, but more seamless, bridgeable connection for the correct people. Our technology primarily controls the fact that we take one or more biometric signals that are camera-based, so that would be gait, facial recognition, anything that's observable through a camera. We bind that with contextual data, meaning a geolocation, a geofence, a Bluetooth handshake, a network connection, any mixture of those scenarios dependent upon the use case, creating a robust architecture where your presence is required. So we want to move out duplicity, something like a Netflix account where you have multiple users logging in on the same account in different locations, utilizing consuming the same service. If I'm conducting a $12 million transaction, I wanna be damn sure that that's me saying yes. Right? What we've added to that since then is cryptographic function. So we can attach this sort of augmented authentication to blockchain, which is the future of everything, we think. This is the holy grail for people working in biometrics, is moving towards a decentralized identity structure, where let's say now we've got a voter database and we have someone walk in who's got a, an old driver's license that's not valid, and we have to turn them away because they didn't you know, get off the couch and go pay the $30 or whatever to, to, to re-register, so they can't vote. And I think that's hogwash. If that person is standing there you know, asserting their identity to vote, they pay taxes, they should be able to. 
that's where decentralized identity can come into place and start to help. Now beyond, we look at uh, truly creating a structure where the human being becomes part of the circuitry of the authentication. And we call it man and machine binding. And you look across all the use cases that exist out there where, again, we become the key and we assert that identity in order for something to occur. But when we've got a bad actor, we also end up with data that shows us who this person is. So we can, again, track after and make sure that we're bringing high fidelity to this operation. So when we look at all the use cases, and each one of these literally dandelions into a multitude of scenarios, one of my favorite uh, to discuss is the automobile. You got a lot of space for hardware in an automobile. You know, they've been able to cram a lot into a mobile phone. They, they ought to be able to fit something that size in a dashboard somewhere. But let's say I've got three permitted users on a very nice automobile. I'm the owner means I get all the preferences that I set and I get full horsepower, volume goes all the way up, etc. Let's say I, I let one of my daughters drive the car. Depending upon who's in that driver's seat, they might get half the horsepower and the volume might only go up to six. It's that kind of permission control that we look at group scenarios where we can give and take permission based upon the individual. And that's tough to do now with just passwords and physical keys. Another one is the travel kiosk scenario. And anyone who's been abroad recently, you know what I'm talking about. So the requirements of biometry uh, for international travel are inherent. Uh, we're looking for bad guys, right? So, but as well, you'll start seeing more and more of these at ticketing gates where we're getting rid of this paper or clunky QR code on the mobile phone. And we're just literally passing through uh, these gateways uh, with uh, robust biometrics approving who we are. We walk right through and uh, we're good to go. So along the spectrum of biometrics, We've got what we're doing, where we're verifying and authenticating, right? On the other end, you've got the covert side. You've got the cameras that you see everywhere in society. I think uh, 28 closed circuit TV systems on average capture our images daily. And if you stop and think about that, some of these retailers are utilizing biometrics to characterize some of our purchase habits, even our emotions. Now, they could go a step further if our government <laughs> was bad acting like uh, China, where they actually have a database of government IDs connected to the business side. There's a lot of information being handed over there that's, that's very interesting. But thank goodness that's not happening here and we wanna keep it that way. I think that uh, along that spectrum, we need to really temper and through new innovation and invention, we need to somehow bridge this gap that exists on the biometric spectrum. And so one of the key benefits I think for this covert surveillance that goes on, one of the benefits obviously is if you're a victim in a crime, what's the first thing you do other than call 911? You ask, was it caught on video somewhere? You know, when we're watching Good Morning America and they have a crime occur and they say we have footage of this, we look for the identity of the perpetrator. We wanna identify that person. This is obviously a benefit to this surveillance uh, and the, the biometric resource that's being used um, in, the, uh, in the public uh, surveillance sector. And that trade-off is worth something. So think about that moving forward. Also understand that this change is taking time, right? We started working on it before 
uh, most of these mobile manufacturers started incorporating biometric modules into their systems. We'll see that at almost 100% within the next year. And so it's obvious here what technology is better than the other. But was it really at this time? You know, you've got to build interstates. You've got to, you know, there's a lot of things that have to occur and it doesn't occur overnight. And so again, I go back to the innovation side of this and the need. Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin when he saw a cat snatch at a chicken through a fence and come up with nothing but feathers. That, that concept, that idea, changed society as we knew it. So again, for the young inventors out there, always keep thinking. Nothing happens overnight and you've got time to figure things out. But look, look for your inspiration always. And in closing, Big Brother is watching. So is Santa Claus, right? <laughs> so know that the power in your pockets right now to assert your identity, to confirm uh, authentication for different transactions and the growing number of transactions, that's an immense power, right? And we're just at the beginning. The next four, five, six years of this, you're going to see massive change in this technology and growth. So take a hold of it and understand and look at the world around you and, and start to think about how you would have it done and inspire yourselves to get out there and invent because that's how this Te this uh, technological era and digital age is going to advance and get better because seeing is believing. Thank you. <laughs>